Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to the video. If you're new to this channel, my name is Joel Gabrielson and I'm a DP based in Little Rock, Arkansas. In this video, I bring you along to a recent production I had out in Houston, Texas. Hey everyone, so I'm out here getting everything prepped for my shoot in Houston this coming week and I'm providing pretty much all production equipment for the two day shoot. So we have cameras, lights, grip, audio, live switch, pretty much everything pertaining to this production has to fit inside my little van. So it's gonna be a little tricky, but I'm trying to figure out the best way to do it. And I think I have a good grasp on what I'm doing so far, but pretty much I'm going to dedicate this innovative cart to cameras, pre-built cameras. It's a four camera multicam switch. So I'm going to keep two cameras on the bottom, two cameras in the middle, and they're already going to be built in like little tool cases. Um, so they're ready to go. I don't have to tech them out. And then on the top of the cart, I'll probably just keep like accessories, um, maybe batteries and that sort of thing. And then I have a crate dedicated to live switch, one to audio, and then another one to like some additional lights. Those batteries will be on the innovative cart. Then I have a teleprompter here. And then on this side, I have four tripods here. One, two, three, four. But one of these I might not use because we'll have a Dana Dolly. So I'll have three cameras on tripods and then a Dana Dolly. That's the goal right now. There is an, a possibility of maybe going to two cameras on monopods just to get a little bit more mobile. One camera on teleprompter and then one on Dana Dolly. So I'm still messing around with that, but that's the idea is for tripods here then i'm gonna have the crates slide in this way and then the innovative cart back here and as far as lighting i'll probably just use like the 600ds um, for a key light then i have some led mats that i might sprinkle in somewhere um and then all the stands c stands combo stands, all that are here. Then I have a bunch of flags that I may use. I have an eight by frame in there and I'll probably use the eight by frame. Uh, so the, the shoot is like a multicam shoot with an audience of like 40 people. And then there's like a keynote speaker sort of thing. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be having to light about 40 people in kind of a U shape. And then the speaker will be in the middle. But yeah, we've done a bunch of these types of shoots before. They're pretty straightforward with lighting. There's only so much you can really do. Um, it's going to be probably a little flat, but it's all good. So I'll keep you guys posted on what it looks like when it's all packed. But yeah, now it's time to wash the car. I'm pretty sure I have a spider living in here somewhere because every time I come to use my van, there's like a big spider web here. So I'm assuming he's just living in there. So I need to clean that off and then just lots of bug stuff here. Clean it all off before the road trip. I like having cameras already built. And then I have them on these little like tool soft cases. I have hard cases for everything. Um, but just in order to get it to fit inside the van, I'm kind of trying a new method with these soft cases because the Pelicans are great, but they just take up so much space. And maybe if I was, you know, working a movie or a TV show or something where the gear was going to get tossed around quite a bit. I would probably rethink this, but because I'm pretty much the only one handling camera setup and whatnot, I think it's going to be fine 
it's just going to live on this cart and everything's pretty well protected on the cart. There just might be some like obvious shake from when I'm driving to Houston. But other than that, everything should be pretty protected for the most part. So I'm not too worried about having the cameras in these soft cases. I think it's going to work out fine. Okay, cart is in. Still have a bunch of space here, here. I put an apple box in here so this guy wouldn't move around too much. Slide back and forth. And then, yeah, got the rock and roller cart underneath the innovative cart with the ramp track there. So we're squeezed in pretty tight, but kind of surprised how much stuff I can fit in this little van. This is a kind of a bigger production that I'm doing in Houston as far as like a four camera multicam shoot with, you know, a G&E package as well. So I'm pretty happy with being able to fit all this stuff in here. And I feel like it's pretty organized too, because that's always the hassle sometimes with owning a vehicle like this is um, once the shoot is over, getting everything back in the van or truck can kind of be a nightmare. But in this configuration, there really is only one way to pack it. So the cart gets packed before it even gets rolled out to the van. That's probably the last piece that goes in. And then the crates also get packed before it even gets to the van. And that goes on the cart. So really the only thing that I have to organize on the van itself is all the lighting here. So these need to get put back into place. So C stands and combo stands and all that need to find its way back to the truck. Um, so that could potentially slow down the whole process, but everything else, I mean, that just kind of gets packed before it even makes its way to the van. So that shouldn't be too hard to put away, but this is the stuff that can get kind of messy. C stands, especially, they have to go in a certain way in order for them to fit. And then I have, you know, some, this is a, a lantern attachment that sits on top there. But yeah, hopefully I'll be able to get everything wrapped and on the van quickly. Because I know we have pretty long shoot days. So last thing I want to do is spend a bunch of time organizing the van after a shoot. But yeah. Made it to location. Just unpacking the van now. Got my little ramp. Good to go. So I was able to unload my van into the location the day before the shoot. So it wasn't in the budget to do a pre pro day. We weren't able to uh, have a bunch of crew here to set up lights and get everything set before production. So I had to do as much as I could by myself before the shoot tomorrow, which is totally fine. This was a little uh, studio area that the church had. They were setting up for another shoot that was happening simultaneous to what we were filming tomorrow as well. So in the main sanctuary, they were able to set up a 28 by 24 uh, stage. So that way we could set up furniture and everything that we need for the shoot tomorrow. So here is what it looked like with some of the uh, furniture added. We were gonna make small tweaks in the morning, but we were just trying to get uh, furniture somewhat in place. So after I wrapped uh, pre-production, I actually met up with a fellow YouTuber, uh, Peter. He has a super cool channel and it was so great connecting with him. I, I watch all his videos and he's a super cool guy. 
if you're not familiar with this stuff, definitely check them out. So just to give you guys a little background to this project, I work for a creative agency based in California, and this is one of their clients. It's a church uh, here in Houston, Texas. We do a lot of uh, corporate work, but we also do a lot of church work as well. And this happens to be one of our clients. We've We've been working with them for two years now, and we're helping them with a couple of campaigns that they're going through this year. So I was in charge of all production, getting everything lined up uh, with crew and equipment, and, and I was also DP for the shoot. In this video, I definitely want to give a shout out to all the crew that I hired that were able to come on this production and just make it happen. Each one of them did an amazing job and I definitely want to give them credit for this shoot because it really was a team effort. I also want to give a huge shout out to Marcus Robinson. He's a local DP in Houston and he captured a lot of BTS for me. I'm super appreciative to him and being able to join me on this shoot. I have Paul Huenfeld, a local here in Little Rock, uh, make the trip out here. And I had him running audio for this this production and just another set of eyes for setup and whatnot. He's always a great resource and I appreciate all the work he's done. But yeah, for the setup, we had a five camera multicam setup. I was using three uh, Sony FS5s as well as two Sony FX3s. Um, I had four of the cameras on tripods and then one of them on a Dana Dolly. And this is Nasir Muhammad. He was also a local here in Houston and he did a great job as a camera op. And if you're in the Houston area, definitely hit him up. We had the five cameras running back to an ATAM switcher. It was the extreme ISO. It was the, the eight channel with the HDMI only. We weren't live streaming or anything like that. This wasn't a live uh, production. We were just utilizing the ATAM to make sure we get good coverage with all the cameras going. And I was able to call shots and make sure we were walking away with everything that we needed for the shoot. I had three cameras that were hardwired uh, via HDMI. And then I had two cameras that were wireless um, using, using a Hollyland transmitter. As far as lighting, it was a pretty basic setup. We had two Aperture 600Bs pushing through an eight by silk. That was kind of our key light. And then we did have an IntelliTech 485 set up on the balcony as kind of like our hair kicker light. As far as audio, we had a Zoom F6 as kind of our main recorder. And then we had two uh, handheld microphones and we had a couple of Pico wireless uh, LAV microphones. We had an XLR going from the output of the F6 into the ATAM to get audio into the line cut. We were recording everything to camera internally and we were recording to the, the Zoom F6 internally as well. Later in post, I'm gonna cut everything again and using the line cut as a reference. So that way I can utilize the 4K internal recording with the S-Log3 as well as the 32-bit float audio. I wanna try and maximize the quality later in post as opposed to using the compressed internal recording from the ATEM. This was more of an interactive shoot. We had an audience and then we had a main speaker. I've probably done about 200 of these types of shoots where it's a speaker and then audience Q&A over the past 12 years. So I'm pretty familiar with the format and, and how we need to capture it. So we had two handhelds, one dedicated to each side of the, of the room. And then as far as coverage for cameras, we had one master wide shot, which was camera five, camera one, was the teleprompter with a mid shot. Camera two was the Dana Dolly. Camera three was a close up for audience on the right side. And then camera four was close up of the audience on the left side of the room. <laughs> uh, 
And then after the shoot, of course, we got to go grab a crew dinner. I always like to treat the crew to a nice dinner, especially after working a 10 to 12 hour day. It's always a fun thing to do. And this is Heath Hill. He's a local here in Arkansas. And he was another one of my camera ops. He was running the Dana Dolly the whole time and did a fantastic job. I appreciate him coming out. <laughs> okay, guys. None of us have high brows. Thank you. Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Over the course of two days, we had two different locations. The first location was at the church, and this location was in a residential home. So I was able to drop off uh, cameras and some equipment off the night before. So the following morning, we had a pretty early call time, 6 a.m., and we're getting everything dialed in for this, this shoot today. This is Tyler Duncan, and he is a local here in Arkansas. He was also running teleprompter for this shoot, and he killed it. Honestly, teleprompter is probably one of the most difficult jobs on a set. And he was able to keep up with talent the whole time and make changes on the fly. And he really kept this whole thing moving. First century, what century are we talking? Mid first century. Where are you from? Standard. 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 So this was the exact same format. We had the five cameras, but this time we were in a living room setup. We had to get a little creative with lighting since we didn't have as much space as we did the day before but we kept the same format as far as coverage with cameras and audio. And as far as lighting, we had the two 600Ds. One was in a, a lantern, giving us a ton of ambient light. And then another one was in a soft box, kind of shaping the light a little bit more for the main talent. And that was pretty much all we did for lighting. And I think it turned out really well. And with the Sony cameras, we shot everything in S-Log3 native ISO um, with some ND on there. And we were able to see out the window the whole entire day with the exposure that we had. We were also using the, the Hollyland solid comms. I had uh, five of them going. I was wearing one and then my four camera ops were wearing the comms. So I was able to communicate to them and call shots uh, during the production. And they worked out super good. I'm a big fan of these comms and they, they did a really good job. So wrapped the shoot here in Houston, back at the hotel doing a little DIT. Got a lot of footage. Still to go on the transfer. I usually like to have everything backed up to hard drives before I travel back. It's just a habit. Um, makes me feel a little bit better about footage and not missing anything. And then I don't format any cards. I keep enough cards to get me through a few days. So that way I don't have to format anything. And then when I travel, I'll usually put hard drives in one bag and then media in like another bag, maybe my backpack or something like that. So that way, if something happens, at least I have a copy. I usually have my backpack with me everywhere. Um, luckily, I've never lost any footage, which is crazy, knock on wood, as I'm transferring this stuff. Hopefully it doesn't go corrupt or anything, but yeah, had a really great time working with a really great crew the last two days. Definitely could not have done it without them. I'm going to leave all their info in the description below just to give them credit on this shoot. So, so thanks guys if you're watching. But yeah, kind of a funny story. I don't know. I think I just travel too much, honestly. That's my biggest takeaway from this, but... For whatever reason, I keep something like this with the hotel cards in my wallet. 
as soon as I get it, I just kind of put it in my wallet. Well, apparently I already had one for my last trip to Houston in my wallet. And I just put the other one in there as well. So I kind of doubled up inside my wallet. And I, both the room numbers are very similar, 301 and 311. This is the, the room I'm in currently. This is the old one. And I pulled the old one out and I went to 301 and tried to get into the room, but obviously it didn't work. So I went back down to the lobby and said, hey, my, my card keys are not working. And then they re-magnetized them or whatever. Um, they thought, you know, maybe they, I put it next to my phone or whatnot and it got demagnetized. So they re-magnetized them. And I went back up and tried to open 301 and it still wasn't working. And then, you know, eventually, I think it was the second time I go back down and then they tell me, that's not my room. And I'm like, what do you mean it's not my room? And then I look in my wallet and I have two sets of keys and they looked at me super weird, like, uh, what the heck is going on? But I just told them I travel quite a bit and it was the exact same hotel that I stayed at last time in Houston. So they were like, oh, okay. But yeah, crazy. I felt like a kind of an idiot, but that's what happens, I guess, if you just don't get rid of stuff and you just keep it in your wallet. I'm pretty bad about keeping things in my wallet um, that don't need to be there, like receipts and things like that. They just kind of gravitate towards this big old wallet. Um, but yeah, funny story. But well, yeah, this was a casualty of the shoot. Had a crack in my windshield on the drive home, but it's all good. I'm going to get that fixed up quick so it doesn't spread. But yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments below or if there's anything you're curious about or anything like that. Just feel free. And I'm going to go ahead and link all the crew in, in the description below. And, and if you're ever in the Houston area, definitely hit up Marcus or Nasir. They're super solid guys. I would definitely recommend them for anything production. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.